This is lecture four, although it falls in week five of the course, and it's part one of two of the lecture. Uh, and the majority of this lecture will be focused on national preparedness. You may or may not be aware that September is National Preparedness Month, and specifically September 30th is National Preparedness Day. Recent logos uh, include this one here, disaster, Be Disaster Aware, Take Action to Prepare, and then the, this year's is Don't Wait, Communicate. For individual preparedness, FEMA recommends that you build an emergency kit and practice for an emergency. And for those that are interested, I have pasted a link to the site right there at the base of the slide. On the next slide is a short video that I think is an effective illustration of the need to prepare our own families ahead, uh, not just for physical safety, but for our own peace of mind. So it's important to remember that in a large-scale emergency that you, yourself, will be ineffective if you do not prepare ahead because you'll be consumed with caring for your own family. The ready.gov website I referenced has a PDF called the Ready Responder Toolkit that has many helpful suggestions. You should have your own uh, bug-out bag or bug-out kit. And pictured here is one that's made by the American Red Cross. Of course, the options are endless. You could really get after it like this family and go straight to uh, zombie apocalypse. In any case, I would be remiss if I did not encourage you to think about your own personal preparations as we discuss your role in national preparedness. You may or may not have noticed in week one when you read the Presidential Policy Directive, PPD-8, the first line under the title read, Subject national preparedness. In an effort to further that objective, the objective being national preparedness, there is a national preparedness goal as articulated by the Department of Homeland Security. They have defined it as a secure and resilient nation with the capabilities required across the whole community to prevent, protect against, mitigate, respond to, and recover from the threats and hazard that pose the greatest risk. So conceptually important terms within the definition are capabilities and whole community. So I'm going to start with the second one, the idea of whole community. It's essential to the success of the national preparedness goal. Just as we learned earlier that a single leader is unable to single-handedly and heroically lead a city out of disaster, so it is not reasonable to believe that the government will single-handedly save all people from a large-scale disaster. To succeed, it takes the whole community. If our preparedness efforts will be effective, it will require citizens to act as one who has a vested interest in seeing it accomplished. In other words, they must truly act like citizens and not consumers. In this context, the term whole community is synonymous with the phrase all of nation. You'll see that in other publications. Uh, they're used interchangeably. Now the term capabilities in this context refers specifically to what are known as core capabilities. The five areas listed in the National Preparedness Goal, prevention, protection, mitigation, response, and recovery, are mission areas 
which should not be confused, of course, with the four phases of the emergency management cycle, despite the similar, similar language. I recognize that the terminology can get confusing at this point, but let me uh, explain a little further. Hopefully it'll clear it up. So here we have a list of the five mission areas. Of course, with the overarching goal of national preparedness, it's broken into these five mission areas. Prevention, protection, mitigation, response, and recovery. And I've summed up you know, the five mission areas by prevention being, well, that's what we do to keep things from happening. Protection, this is how we safeguard ourselves once it actually does. Mitigation, you know, what can we do to lessen the impact? Uh, response is actually taking action, um, getting after to, to solve problems, and then a recovery, of course, um, getting our, our actual infrastructure back up and running again. With the five uh, mission areas are the core capabilities that I talked about. Core capabilities are critical elements that are necessary to meet the national preparedness goal. For example, the prevention mission may include, you know, stopping a terrorist attack, trying to prevent that from happening. And the core cap capabilities answers the question, okay, what do we need in place to do that? There are seven core capabilities that fall under just the prevention mission area. There are numerous core capabilities depending on each of the mission areas, and it's not necessary to memorize all of them. What is important is that you understand the concepts that undergird the national preparedness goal, namely the structure of mission areas and core capabilities. Now that said, there are three core capabilities that span all five mission areas. And I've listed them here, planning, public information and warning, and operational coordination. Here's a graphic that illustrates um, the five mission areas and then all of the corresponding core capabilities by mission area. While there are a total of 31 capabilities, you'll notice that there are only three that uh, span all five of the mission areas. The planning, public information and warning, and operational coordination, the three up there at the top. And then the other core capabilities are specific to, there is some overlap, but they're specific to each of the mission areas. Okay, so one more time. The ultimate goal here is national preparedness. All right, we've got that. So how do we accomplish national preparedness? We commit ourselves to accomplishing five missions or five mission areas. All right, that makes sense. How do we accomplish those missions? By developing core capabilities that apply to each of the mission areas. Okay, so for example, you're finding improved way, uh, finding ways to improve our intelligence and information sharing right here. Those core capabilities, if you improve those, you'll then help with the prevention and protection which then, of course, ultimately leads to greater national preparedness. All right. In the National Preparedness Report published by the Department of Homeland Security in March of 2014 is an example of the progress that is being made in the national preparedness effort as it relates to Superstorm Sandy that took place in 2012. And uh, quoted in there is this, uh, quote, Hurricane Sandy presented an opportunity to, gem to demonstrate the nation's improved capability to respond to and recover from a major incident. Before, during, and after Sandy, the nation showed unity of effort in a complex, multi-state environment, surged resources, tested new doctrine, and, most importantly, focused on meeting survivor needs. Sandy reinforced the critical role of three core capabilities, planning, operational coordination, and public information and warning that are common to all the mission areas and enable the success of other capabilities, end quote. So this is a testament to the progress that has been made in the effort that is invested before crises occur. This whole national preparedness idea 
so that we are planning ahead. This is why understanding the concepts and being familiar with the language of national preparedness can actually have the effect someday of saving lives.